Perfect. My name is Tiara Jackson, and I'm a rising third year student at the University of Georgia College of Pharmacy. I am honored to be standing before you today in hopes of becoming your 2021-2022 SNAFA National President-Elect. I am passionate about supporting and uplifting underserved communities, as well as offering equitable resources to patients and students of color. I was raised in a single parent household, and when I was 12, my mother was diagnosed with congenital heart failure. Over the course of a few years, she had open heart surgery followed by an intense pharmacotherapy regimen until her condition improved. From that experience, I learned firsthand about the importance of strong patient or strong community support and patient advocacy. Though it was a trying time with the help of so many dedicated healthcare professionals, we overcame. And since then, it's been my mission to offer that same dedication to disadvantaged communities by creating safe spaces for patients and professionals in healthcare. When I talk about my passion for underserved communities, it comes from lived experiences. I've walked in the shoes of an uninsured patient. I've sat in the seat of a concerned loved one. And most importantly, I've persevered as a minority student without adequate resources to succeed. My passion will easily translate when it comes to investing in this organization and encouraging others to do the same. As a manager at a free clinic among an interprofessional team, I've learned to communicate effectively among a group with diverse strengths and perspectives for the benefit of the community. As a student ambassador, I've learned to remain adaptable in these unprecedented times, and I look forward to finding our way through this post-pandemic SNAFA experience in a fashion that is safe yet memorable for everyone. And as a founder of a new thriving organization on UGA's campus, I've developed resilience in the face of rejection and adversity. I'm committed to working together and solving any challenges that we may face. Serving the underserved is about more than just offering community service. It's about promoting informed health-related decisions, advocating for health equity, and reestablishing trust in a healthcare system that's been neglecting minority communities for generations. SNAFA has cultivated a passionate network of students from across the nation who understand this and who have committed to making this change. I'm inspired by each and every one of you. Involvement in this organization has tasked us with manifesting change. As leaders in this profession, we have an obligation to relieve burdens created by health disparities. As pillars in this community, we have responsibilities to improve health literacy and dispel misconceptions. And as stewards over the future of pharmacy, we have a range to shape our scope of practice and provider status. By answering SNAFA's call to serving the underserved, we're preparing to do all of this and more. Almost 50 years ago on the campus of Florida A&M University, brave leaders took the first steps in reshaping our profession. They paved the way for diverse professionals and gave us a seat at the table. They heard a call to support their neighbors in underprivileged communities, so they did. They saw a need to amplify underrepresented voices, so they did. They imagined a future where minority communities could create powerful change, and here it is. Those leaders made an investment in us and I'm running on the premise of re reinvesting in our own future. To do this, it requires us to reinvest in future student pharmacists, ourselves and our communities. We can reinvest in future students by establishing a national pre-pharmacy initiative. This initiative would include sponsored pharmacy school visits, an application prep series, mentorship, and even financial support. Providing students with these valuable resources would offer a solid foundation when entering pharmacy school, expand membership for SNAFA, and create a new leadership opportunities for existing chapters. We can invest in members by restructuring scholarship to develop a SNAFA emergency fund. We know that disparities and socioeconomic disadvantages can extend well beyond the communities that we serve and into our own cohorts. Working with NAFA and our generous sponsors to create an emergency fund will limit resources that will allow or will create resources that will allow students to reach their full potentials, um, regardless of financial disadvantages or unforeseen circumstances. We can invest in our communities by creating intentional outreach. I'll work with regional facilitators to create a quarterly current events a newsletter for their region. The newsletter would provide a broad overview of social and political challenges facing specific areas so that our chapters are better informed on how they can make the biggest impact. I'm running for this position because it's my mission to be an advocate for others and SNAFA has given me a vehicle to do this through. SNAFA has shown me there is so much more work to be done and there's a future generation of pharmacists ready and willing to do more. By serving on the National Executive Committee, I would like to strengthen the resources that will allow students and patients to reinvest in their future and reach their full potential. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to get the question started off. So uh, first one, uh, from all that you learned about the roles in the organization, 
tell us how you feel you would contribute to this upcoming year. I think there are a few things that I would be able to contribute to this upcoming year. First and foremost, I would remain transparent, flexible, and available. Um, with these unprecedented times, I wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page and we're all working together in the best way that we can. I wanna do this by creating office hours that people can drop in and talk to me whenever they have any questions or concerns. I would also keep um, board members, I would also keep chapters and board members updated with CDC guidelines. I think we all know that it's extremely unprecedented with everything that's going on with COVID-19. And so I would wanna make sure everybody has the most update and accurate information and they're aware of how they can make it the biggest impact in affecting their community while still remaining safe. I would also want to create tiered guidelines for outreach. So for those high risk activities that might cause some significant uh, transmission of COVID-19, we would offer ways to mitigate those um, outreach opportunities and show um, different chapters ways that they can still get reach the same outcome without necessarily um, causing any harm to our patients. I would also have a lot to contribute as far as the um, regional conference. Um, I've been able to planned this last virtual regional conference. So I feel like I've seen benefits and limitations of both. And I would be able to work with the um, coordinating chapters to make it a safe and enjoyable experience for everybody. Awesome, thank you. In a virtual environment, how do you envision SNAFA still having a voice amongst the other prominent student pharmacy organizations? Thank you for that question. I believe that SNAFA has already established a wonderful voice. There is already a vast network of people and professionals that we are reaching and they've always done it through a virtual environment. I think that SNAFA would be able to continue that by maintaining, um, by still doing the webinars and making sure that everybody is getting the most up-to-date information and the most I don't want to say reliable, getting the most information that they can from our webinars and everything like that. All right, thank you for that response. The next question is, what is the most important responsibility of being president-elect and why? I think the most important responsibility of president-elect is being an effective communicator. Um, there, being the speaker of the house, um, you would have to be able to not only facilitate communication between others, but make sure you're able to communicate um, yourself. And so I think that's one of the most valuable um, skills that a president-elect would have. I would be able to work and help facilitate conversations that, because I have experience doing that, um, especially among an interprofessional team. Um, as I mentioned in my speech, as a clinic manager at a free clinic, I've been able to help really facilitate conversations between people with differing strengths to make sure that we're doing everything for the benefit of, of the patient. And lastly, what would you tell members about the benefits of joining SNAPA? Let's see, I would speak so highly of all of the benefits of SNAFA. I think some of the most memorable ones for me are mentorship. Um, I've gotten a couple of mentorships through um, different bridging the gap chairs and just being able to network with the, these professionals and offer or accept guidance um, has really been, has really done wonders for me in my professional development. I would also highlight the leadership opportunities that SNAFA has given, um, whether it be, um, on this national border locally, there are so many opportunities to get involved and to give back to your community. Um, I would also highlight service. That's one of the things that I'm passionate about. And so I would really help that or make sure that translates as well, that this is an organization where you have a voice and it's a voice of students working together to benefit the community. And so that's, those are the three things that I would highlight. 